Hey guys and gals, friends of YouTube, uh, Ludfly Helis here. We are back for part four of uh, building the SIG Cadet LT40 trainer. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the last uh, part three, we got the engine fuel tank all mounted up, pretty much ready to go. Uh, now we're going to put the electronics in this thing, so we have to mount a switch in our servos and receiver and everything. Um, and then we'll hook up the tail feathers. Uh, I'll see kind of what the time wise goes here. I'm trying to keep these under an hour if any way possible. So um, anyway, let's get started. I am running uh, the Tactic TSX 35. They're just basically a standard servo. Um, I'm running a six volt battery and at six volt there's 73 ounce of torque, which is plenty for this plane. Usually a trainer calls for like 48 to 52 ounces, something like that. So we're we're well over <coughs> what they're calling for. Um, I'm going to put one of these together here. Your servos, depending on your brand, are going to come packaged differently. These are in a big old plastic package. Uh, a lot of them come just in a little cardboard box. But uh, let's get everything out. See what we got. Um, you're going to have a your servo, of course, and there's a little bit of oil on that. Let me get some paper towel here and wipe it off. Okay. Um, then you'll have your main servo. Let me get this down here a little better. And uh, your lead coming off of it. We'll take this tie loose. And lay all that over here. Let's just go ahead and chunk this in the trash. Alright. Um, then you have a, a little bag of, of uh, goodies here, your grommets, your screws, and your control horns. Um, we're going to set this one up for the rudder and the um, steering, <coughs> which will both run off of one servo. <coughs> Excuse me, man, <coughs> choked up this morning. I'm going to keep my little baggie to put the excess in. All right, it will come with a big round horn. And this one, if you use it for any reason, you have to drill your holes where you want them and stuff. But I hardly ever use those, maybe on a helicopter. Um, it will come with a uh, six-armed one. And, uh, and it will come with a big double arm, long. We don't need one quite that long. It will also come with a four-arm. Uh, most, most all servos come with this pretty much basic set. Uh, of horns. Now what I'm going to do is uh, just clip oh, let's knock something off of here. <laughs> I'm going to clip two of those off and we're just going to make it a double. And What we want is one side for the steering linkage and the other side to the rudder. So uh, let me find my little grommet that I just knocked on the floor and I'll be right back. Found that. Um, got everything laid out here now so what we want to do first uh, this particular servo has just round holes it's got round grommets so I'm gonna need a little flathead screwdriver um, you'll just have to kind of fold these get one corner kind of started and then I take a screwdriver and just push the rest of it down through there. I'm going to have to kind of go all the way around it. There we go. That's pretty easy. Just make sure it all comes out on the bottom and unfolds under there so it's nice and, and snug. So anyway, let's get all four of those put in here. Be careful. Don't put a lot of force poking around with your screwdriver. You can tear the rubber just gently push it through and then go to the back side and kind of pull up the lip and feed it in there. So, pretty easy to do. Uh, some types of servo, JR, uh, have open slots on the end here and theirs are like a, it's a one piece rubber grommet that fits both holes at the same time. And it'll be a top half and a bottom half. I, I honestly prefer those but 
that's all right these are working pretty good some of Futaba servos will be like this uh, with the little single holes and I believe high techs are more like the JR if I'm not mistaken I can't remember I've used a lot of high techs but gosh it's been a been a while since I've actually built a whole plane um, well, that one's really stubborn. I'm going to go back over here. There we go. There we go. Alright. Got all those pulled through all the way. Settled. Now, what you want to do on this um, is put your grommets in from underneath, not on top. A lot of people make the mistake of just sticking that grommet in the top. And what happens, this sets on usually... 99% uh, of the time on a wooden servo tray when you tighten that screw down against that this sharp edge sticks out the bottom and that will just dig into the wood and eventually vibration this will loosen up and be able to wobble if you put this in from the bottom it serves as a type of washer on the base of that and keeps it from digging into the wood so you want these on the bottom your screws have kind of a built on washer on top that will squeeze against it right there so always put your grommets in from underneath on the bottom side of your servos I did the same thing everybody else does when you first start when I first started building I put them in from the top I didn't know any better and uh, boy it just eat the wood up so anyway uh, another good tip for you beginners that are building on planes alright we got all those in there seem to be seated pretty good okay um, now, we're not going to bother putting our servo horn on at this time. We'll uh, just keep it out of the way and until we get it mounted inside the plane. So I'm going to put this stuff back in the baggie and I just add this to my drawer of, of servos and stuff over here. I can figure out where it's at. This one I guess. I have tons and tons of servo arms and they, they come in handy for a lot of other stuff too. So, Okay, we've got this one. Uh, grommets put together. Here's the screw for the servo arm. And I'm just going to lay it aside. And then these are the four mounting screws. Uh, the first thing actually I want to do on this, uh, what I'm going to do, is use my quick connects uh, on here get my hardware out to do that need two of those two screws two metal locking caps and two plastic caps okay all right um, we're going to use the outside hole for the rudder side and let me get my tools out here. Should have already had this part done. Slacking this morning. Okay. Alright now again my for my previous videos the 764 is a little socket fits right over the top of this metal uh, locking ring so put that on there kind of whoops get it steady. Alright drive that on Put a plastic safety deal on there and you can take a pair of vice grips, push that on down, make sure it swivels freely. You don't want any slack in these at all. These fit very snug right here. Once in a while, uh, if you use the bigger ones, like on bigger planes, you'll have to drill the hole out in the arms, but not on this one. These, one, these fit. Alright, on the steering side, I'm going to go to the next hole in. The reason I'm doing that, I want pretty sensitive rudder control. But I don't want my steering on the front wheel over sensitive, so I'm going to take that in just a little bit. Uh, the longer the servo arm on your servo, the more throw it's going to give you. And the shorter your arm is on the uh, control surface, uh, the more throw it's going to give you. So in other words, on a 3D plane, you're going to use real long servo arms, and you're going to short, short, short... Uh, control horns or the inside holes to really get a lot of throw on that thing. We don't want a lot of throw on this trainer. It's a trainer plane. We want it real docile and, and easy to use. So, Alright, we're going to put the steering one in on the second hole in from the outside. Let's see here. Get my washer. Let's 
stuck on here. Ah, that'll do that once in a while. Get out of line and pop off. Okay. Get back on here. Kind of hold a little pressure on it. There we go. On good and solid. Plastic one's on. For right now, we're going to screw the little set screws in here so we don't lose them. Okay. We've got that one set up. Now, uh, rather than bore you with the video on the whole time, I'm going to go ahead and get the other two out and they will be single arms because one's for throttle and one's for elevator so uh, let me get those put together and then we'll be right back to put this thing in the plane okay um, we've got all of our servos put together uh, grommets and everything installed and we got our other two arms mounted uh, I had a first just happen to me I mounted the quick connect on here and the little cap and everything and those little metal rings are hard to get back off because they're made for a one way so they're hard to get off anyway um, I got it all together and then look at that one there's no hole drilled through it for the wire to go through it's a blank I've never had that happen before <laughs> I got like six dozen of these in my little drawer and I've never had one like that before so anyway we're gonna chunk that but uh, I had to get that little metal ring back off, which was a little exciting. Anyway, uh, now we're ready to install. I'm going to go ahead and link up my receiver to my radio because we're going to need it. Now, normally I put all my gas and nitro in my JR9303 radio. It is almost full. It holds 30. Well, it is full. I'd have to make a hole somewhere. Uh, I have two of these tactic... Uh, TTX 650s. Love this little radio. Uh, I've got two of them. I bought one out of scratch and dent, box damage or something. Anyway, I got it for like $89 or $82. They're 139 I think, normal price. But they're great little radios. They hold 20 aircraft. They've got all the features of a big $500 radio. And this is a great entry level radio for the price right here. Uh, it's six channel. And it's just just amazing what it does. I've been I've been very happy with it. I've had them for about a year now, or close to it, and I just love these. And that one thing I really like about them, and the reason I'm going to put this plane in one of these radios, even though I'm using them for electrics, it is a trainer. These radios have wireless buddy box system. Uh, you just program it and turn them on. They hook up, they link up, and as long as you stay within 15 feet of each other, you got wireless trainers. So I'm going to put this in my number two radio. There are no planes in this right now at this time. I've got most of my electrics in my number one, and I've got them marked. I put a number two on the back of this one so I can tell them apart. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put this nitro plane in this radio. It is a trainer, and that's what I'm going to use it for. We're going to use it to teach people how to fly, so I'll have a wireless trainer system, and it'll be a lot easier than that cord hanging between us and stuff. So, uh, first thing I want to do, and this, this all depends on what radio you're using, I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to go to my model select, and I'm going to pick number one, since there's nothing in here. Now, I'm going to hit that one time real quick. Nope. Nope, got to back up, sorry. And hold it down. I got to go into my model management program. And like I said, this is going to be different for different radios. All right, uh, plane type, airplane. So I'm going to scroll down to name. I'm going to highlight that. And uh, I'm just going to put in here cadet. So let's. There we go. Got the model name. Now, model. we want to go down to wing type and make sure it's on acro or normal. This one says normal. Some of them say acro, some of them say v-tail, delta wing. This one says uh, starts with normal and that's what I want it on. It's normal, so it's okay. If I was going to put a helicopter, I'd have to change it you know, to that. So uh, Anyway, channel assignments, we're not going to worry about that right now main thing we want to do is link the receiver so we got the radio on we're going to plug a battery into the power and we're going to take a little t-pin we're going to push in on that button until it starts blinking 
you let it blink for two or three times, let off of it, and it read solid, it's linked up to that channel. So, there we go. We got that. Now I can uh, put that aside, kind of. Well, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and kind of center these up. I'm going to make this one my rudder and steering, which will be number two, channel number two on mine. Uh, these uh, tactics are set up like a Futaba. And what we're wanting to do is get that centered, if we can, with the splines at a 90 degree. And that's, that's perfect right there. Couldn't be any better. So, I'm going to leave that on there for now. Take this one off. It's where I want it. Okay, then we'll do one for the elevator. And that will be, oh, you know what? And channel 2, I'm sorry, I think is the elevator. I think 4 is a rudder. Let me go back here. Put this one. Okay. Yeah, channel two is the elevator. I'm sorry. So that one uh, will go to the inside. And yeah, we'll go ahead and put it this direction. Now I want to try to. Oh, yeah, looky there. I put that on upside down. Imagine that. Uh, Wow, that one, the splines hit 90 degree. A lot of times they're slightly off and you have to go into your radio and your sub trim to 90, 90 degree them up, but these are all locking in perfect. So that's going to be my rudder. Now let me go back and check this steering one. I need to put it. I said, I can't talk today. This one's going to be my elevator. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the first one, which is going to be the rudder, and I need to put it on channel 4. And it should still be centered. It is. So, rudder. Okay. There we go. We'll lay that one aside. This one will be my throttle. Uh, and it sets in there at a different angle. So the servo horn, I'll have to change my deal, but well, let me plug it in. And your throttle, I believe, is channel 3. Channel 1 is ailerons on here. Okay, now we don't want this one necessarily, the throttle one, at 90 degree. The reason being, you want it to, when the throttle is shut down, it's going to be slightly to the back. It's going to be sitting in here sideways like this. So when you throttle up, oops, it's going the wrong direction. I'm going to have to, um, let me pull that little screw out and keep that from doing that. I'm going to have to go in here and reverse it. Okay, servo set. We'll go to channel number three, highlight it, reverse it, and we're done there. Okay, now we want this back here to angle, and then as you throttle up, it'll go forward. So I can actually, let me see how far this is. In our travel adjustment, we'll go in to adjust that so it doesn't go 100% full range. We'll do that later after we get installed. But anyway, your throttle servo arm is going to be offset, not centered up 90 degree. So, all right, we got that one all good. I've got to change that deal over. Um, so at this point, we're done with this for just a little bit. So we'll turn the radio off. And uh, I'm going to set it down here in the floor out of the way and put the receiver over here. Let me go back and change this quick connect on this, and I will be back in just a minute. Okay, got the servos all ready. Now... Uh, first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and mount a switch in this thing. And I'm going to take the screws out of the cap. I like these heavy duty switches that have the built in charge jack. Uh, a trainer generally is not that big a deal to have a charge jack, except that it uh, you have to take your wing off to check your battery voltage. And, you know, I don't like that. I, I like to be able to check my voltage after every flight with a voltmeter to see where it's at. You never know when you're going to have a bad cell or something. So I like a charge jack on the outside of my plane. That way I don't have to take the wing off uh, to uh, get to it. These switches here are heavy duty. Um, I get these from badbradgraphics.com. Uh, you can look up his website, get his phone number on there and just call him and order them. They're, I think these are $10 a piece. They've got the little green LED that lets you know the switch is still on. 
and then the regular ones are like eight bucks. They're twenty five dollars, twenty and twenty five dollars at the hobby shops. It's the same stuff. So anyway, it works really well. So what we're going to do is take the little back plate off to use as a pattern. Now here's what I want to do. Uh, generally, I put my switches on the left hand side of the plane. And just because when I sit down there, I just reach over there and flip it on right-handed. So you can put it on either side. It doesn't matter. I want this switch down here in the black so it doesn't show as much. I don't want to put it up here in the middle of the window. So I'm going to put it in the black. So what I'm going to do, and I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but I'm going to have to go in here and measure. I want it right down there. Uh, you probably can't see me underneath that linkage. There's a spot right there. And... Uh, I'm going to go in there, I'm going to measure that, so I can measure on the outside, see how far down it is, and then mark the outside of it. Um, see my ruler here, so we're going to go, okay, to the bottom of that secondary piece of plywood is, it's a half inch from the bottom, so it's this, uh, is five and seven eighths to the top of this fuselage right here. Uh, numbers on the other side of the ruler. So what I'm going to do, and I need to let's see, it's a little over an inch. So I'm going to take a marker. I need to get this back a certain distance too. So I need to go back to right there. All right. Wheel in, huh? Now what I'm going to do is put this at five and seven eighths at the top of that, and then I know on the inside a half inch up is the bottom of that. So I'm going to go up just a little bit from that, another eighth of an inch. I've got me a mark there. It's kind of hard to see because I used black, but I've got a mark right there. Now, what I also want to do is mark the front side of this. Get it squared up here with the bottom. Okay, and then there. I want to mark this so I know not to go any farther forward than that right there. Now, what I can do is turn this up here I can take this and lay it on there try to get where you can see this I don't know it's hard to see because it's black but I'm gonna lay this on there where my mark is or a vertical and a horizontal mark I'm gonna put it right there knowing that that will go above that secondary piece of plywood now what I'm gonna do is stick a t-pin there and I'm using the big heavier ones and that is going to hold that in place for me now I'm going to take hmm, find my other one take my my razor knife and cut along the inside of that Just enough to cut through the covering at this point. I'm kind of holding this with my finger to keep from moving it too much. Okay, now we can take that off. And I don't know how well you'll be able to see. Like I said, it's black over here. But there's a little bit of a glare. You can kind of see the outline that I've got. So we're very gently take our knife this is balsa inside here so we're going to cut right on through that the vertical part you have to kind of saw it just a little bit the horizontal it'll go with the grain so it'll cut right through it go backwards and we'll go here and we've got our piece of wood out of there now we may have to shave this a little bit uh, see if the switch is going to fit through here. We'll test fit it. Yeah, 
know, just a little bit. We'll have to shave it just a little bit. So take my razor knife. May have shaved the bottom of it just a tiny bit too, so go ahead and do that. All right, we'll get the extra wood out of the inside in a minute. Okay, now let's try our switch. Um, I want the on position to the back. And the reason I do that is because, believe it or not, my friend Ken had a big bug. He had his switch facing with on to the front one time, and he had a big bug hit his switch and shut the power off to his plane. It was crazy. Okay, now, at this point, we'll take our two little screws, stick them all the way in there through the wood. The holes are already there from the pins for the screws. See, that doesn't even hardly show in that black. So now, we will go inside. This is going to be the tricky part because it's kind of up underneath this uh, servo tray. So it's going to be hard to get to to hold under there, but I will. Anyway, um, what I'm going to do is feed my backing back over this. And I'm going to have to work it up under there. So I'm going to turn the camera off while I'm doing this because it's probably going to be a little tricky and take a little time. And I don't want to waste any more video than I have to. So I'll get that on there and then be back in a minute. Okay, it wasn't near as hard as I thought. I turned the plane over at this angle. I took my tweezers. I just reached in there and slid it down over the wires and it dropped right into place. Now, I'll get that out of there while I'm in there. That's what I cut out. Now, I am going to have to try to hold this like with the tweezers or something while I start the screw. This is going to be a little interesting here. Let me see if it's going to take just... No. Oh, Alright. This is where I need a, a third hand. But I'm going to attempt to do this by myself. If I can get the pressure on that to where the screw will grab it. Come on. It's not wanting to tick. Okay. All right, I may have to enlist some help. Let me let me turn this off for a minute. All right, I finally got the switch screwed down. It's a little little tough to get to, but I managed. Um, not knowing exactly where the CG is going to end up on this yet, I'm I'm hoping that the battery will be able to fit right in there on that little pad I've got in there. And there's a slot on each side, I can put Velcro around it, but I have no idea yet until I get the, everything put together and get the wing set on it, and that's the last thing we'll do. But for right now, I'm gonna lay it right in there and plug it in or we can use the power off of it. Uh, your battery will plug into this lead off your switch and the switch is in the on position, so the light's on. That's what I like about these. It, let you know at a glance whether you've left your plane on or not. So there we go. Got that hooked up. Um, I don't have the Velcro in there yet. Um, yeah, matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that so we can turn this plane upside down. The battery won't be flopping around. Let me put a piece of that in and I'll be back in a second. Okay, we got our battery just temporarily Velcroed in there out of the way. Um, now we're getting ready to install the servos. You're going to need your uh, what I use is a 1 16th drill bit, uh, which is smaller than uh, the servo screws. Now, uh, some of these I'll be able to get to without an extension, but I'm going to have to put my extension on that I've got for part of it. So, got my Ryobi drill, uh, whatever drill you got that works. Um, now, what we're going to do, let me see. Um, this is going to be the elevator servo, so we're going to thread that wire down through here. I'm going to take my tweezers. Let me get them back out. I guess I'll put them up. What do I do with them? Oh, here they are. I want to 
get that wire back here out of the way. Well, actually it doesn't really matter at this point because we're going to take it back out to super glue the hole. So for right now, I'm going to put it through here. And you know what, I think I'm going to turn those. Well, there went my servo horn. <laughs> that was cute. Oh well, I don't really need it on there right now. Alright, get that in there, and I'm hoping with this camera angle you can see what I'm doing. The servo is slightly smaller than the hole, the cutout. And what you want to do is try to center that to where there's a little slack all the way around it. It keeps down vibration. Uh, if it's up against the wood, you pick up more vibration from the engine and stuff. So, I'm going to hold my finger on that tight, and I'm going to go ahead and drill these first two holes. Now don't put a lot of pressure, just let your drill do the work. It's a little thin piece of plywood, and if you push real hard, you can bust that. So you do not want to bust that. Now, what I'm going to do, I have these real long little screwdrivers, and I'm hoping it's magnetized. Yes, it is. I have a little magnetizer that I use if I'm not. So I'm going to stick that on the end of the screw, and before that gets moved, I am going to thread those down in there. So... Hang on just a minute. Okay, sorry about that. I had a phone call there. I needed to take it. My buddy Bill. So anyway, uh, I've got those two screws in. I did decide to turn the servo back the other way so I'd have more space right here between that tube. But anyway, I got the first two in so it's nice and solid. Now I can drill my last two. Okay, now we're going to put those in. Keep in mind, we're going to take these right back out and uh, put super glue in the wooden holes. But I'm gonna screw it all the way down, make sure it's threaded all the way through the wood. You end up doing this twice basically, but it's worth the chance not to have a screw work loose when you do this. Okay. All right, now they're all in. Let's take them all back out. Here's something too that works really good in my little electric uh, battery powered drill. I love it for these servo screws. Saves a lot of cranking with your hand. And I'll loosen them with that and then I'll drag them out with a magnetized screwdriver. Okay, actually, yeah, I can, there, that'll pull those out. Magnetized screwdriver is really, really handy in most situations. Every once in a while it can be very annoying. All right, we're gonna take that out, and what I'm gonna do is get my thin CA, and we are going to put Oh, three or four drops in each hole. Three, I'll put three. Three, and let that wick into those. Okay, now we're going to let that set. I'm going to get this uh, servo completely installed, and basically the other two are just the same, So, and I'll show you which direction they go and everything, but uh, I'll just go ahead and turn this off for now, and we'll be back when this glue dries. Okay. Our glue's dried, so now what I'm going to do is probably use my tweezers and feed that wire back up here to the front for now. Don't know for sure where the receiver is going to end up. I'm hoping maybe I can put it just right here. Uh, build a little block right in here to put it in. I may end up having to put it back here. I don't know. I may have to move the battery back here. It just all depends on how our balance comes out. But I am going to go ahead and let's see that is the elevator. That will be channel 2. Okay. And then get the power switch to the battery up here. Or the power lead I mean from the switch. And we'll put it where the battery goes. Channel one will be our ailerons. 
and we will put a uh, like a six inch extension to where we can reach up here and plug the wing in when we put the wing on but for right now we'll put that one in there now we can put our screws in permanent I'll use my magnetized screwdriver get it lined up over your holes you drilled and get them started okay let's see both of these in this end I haven't tightened them all the way down yet I usually use my little electric one to put these in but this uh, long one's working pretty good so now I've had people ask me how tight do you tighten them do you tighten them down till the rubber squishes okay you want to tighten them down till the rubber just starts to squeeze you do not want to cinch them down so hard that you completely massacre the rubber grommet uh, you want that to absorb shock so you screw them down until it just starts to squeeze the rubber grommet out from its normal size and then stop right there don't don't just crank them on down to where it just squeezes them to nothing okay that one's installed um, let me get my radio turn it on turn the power on over here all right there's that let's see if that's gonna that's gonna 90 yep just fine all right now at this point and find what I did with them I can go ahead and put the servo screw in this well actually I will leave them out for just a little bit sometimes you have to pull this off to get that wire in it so we'll leave it but anyway uh, elevator 2 is going to come out on the bottom on the back so it's going to pull down on it so that is I've got to reverse that channel 2 Okay, it's going to push back. That'll push the elevator up. Okay. Up, down. There we go. All set on that one. All right. Now, I'm not going to run the camera the whole time on the other two. I will when I hook up the linkage. But you install the other two exactly like you did this one. Lay it in there. Center it up with a little bit of slack around it. Hold it good and tight. Drill your holes. I drill these two or one end. Put the screws in that and then drill your other ones. And and uh, put them all in and then take them back out and put super glue in them so anyway you'll know how to do that Just do all three of them the same way and we will be back when I get the rest of them installed okay um, I got that one installed over here now uh, if you can see the throttle linkage tube it's it's longer than it needs to be well the servo horn is going to hit about right here on this corner so what we need to do is cut that plastic off about right up here uh, so let me see if I can take I do it with my needle nose. Put them up. Let me see if I can get a hold of that. Oh, you probably can't see down in here. Can't get the light all the way over here. Now I'm going to take a razor knife and cut. And get both sides of that. It's going to be hard to get underneath it. I might be able to take my side cutters. And very gently, I don't want to cut through the wire, just the plastic. So I'm going to put these on here and see if I can cut a little bit. Get the top part of it cut open. Or maybe I can get the razor knife in it. Well, be careful here and don't cut your fingers. This blade break or slip, it would lay you wide open. Now, this is kind of a pain right here, guys, to get this cut off. Um, i got to get underneath it. I'm going to bend this up a little bit. It won't hurt it. I won't bend it too far. Golly. There. Well... Shoot, it came out. How about that? 
I, mean, I thought it was glued in, but they haven't glued it, so let's just take it off. My gosh, how can, easy can that be? Alright. Now, we'll take a razor knife and kind of trim up our jagged edge there. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? Okay. Now, while we've got that out, I'm also going to get my big cutters. I'm going to try to cut that off just a little bit to get it out of the way. It'll probably have to be left that long. Let's see. Man, that is some stout wire. Oh, man. And these cutters ain't worth a darn for whatever reason. I guess they're cheap. I may have to get my Dremel out of hold of this. Okay, hang on a minute. Let me get... Oh, here they are. Let me get another pair of needle nose and get a hold of this now that I've got it cut halfway in half. I should be able to bend that and break it on off. There we go. Okay. Got a little bit of that out of the way. Now, what did I do? It's that piece of plastic. We need to get that out of there. So it's not in the way. Now, what did I do with my servo horn that I pulled off of there? I thought I took it out. What did I do? Drop it down in the plane? Yeah, I did. All right, tweezers again. It is right there. Okay, well, good grief. Keeps hanging on all them wires. All right, there we go. Uh, not sure it's centered. Until we turn it on, but we'll put it back on there. I'm going to go ahead and put a screw in that. So we don't keep knocking that off. We can always take it back out real quick if we need to. You're straight. Don't cross thread it. Okay. Now, we can get our third one in there. Let's see. First thing I need to do is put that tube back around that. So, what I'm going to do, since I can see it real well right in here, I'm going to put it in from the front. I'm going to take this quick connect loose up here on the throttle arm. Just loosen it a little bit. And what you want to do is you want to sand the end of this that's going to be glued up here in the front. Just sand the end of it. Rough it up so it looks like that. Okay, now we're going to put that back over the tube, I mean over the wire, and we're going to leave the wire in place to guide it through. And there we go, it came right out, see? I don't know if you can see it moving down there. Okay, now we're going to shove that all the way up. Well, yeah, that'll, let me push it up a little bit farther. All right, now we're going to take our thin CA up here on the front where I rough that up. Let me see if I can get this over here where you can see it. Um, right there. We're going to CA around that. Let that wick in there. You can kind of take that tube from in here and kind of twist it and let it roll around. That way it'll... If I twist it like that, you'll you'll get some of the glue inside there. Now we're going to just let that set right there, and now we can go back and put our throttle servo in. So we're just going to pull the arm off of that. And uh, anyway, you've already seen me drill the hole, so I will I'll get this in place, and then we'll be back in a second. Okay. Um, while I was in there. Get that light up or good enough. You can see the the, the tube over here. I, I glued it in place. And I also took the steering rod and I put a, a little bit of a Z-band in it. 
and because it comes out in here right next to this servo tray platform well it needs to raise up to go into here so to keep from putting it in a bind I made this little bit of a z-band where it'll come up and poke into the the servo horn uh, quick connect so whoops well, that glue didn't hadn't dried yet let's put that down here and we get a pair of needle nose to guide that into that hole now I'm going to have to loosen that nut a little bit okay there we go we're just going to temporarily tighten that right now we're going to wait and cinch it on down later on now make sure that tube is going to stay wire back through the steering link on the front. That tube is not gluing good to that wood. I'm going to have to put a little bit more on it. I may end up having to, uh, well it would be hard to do because that switch. Sometimes you can drill a hole on either side of this and put a zip tie around it, but my switch is right under there so I'm not real sure how that would work. I'll just let this glue dry real good and it, it should be fine once it dries. So, alright, we got that one. Now I still got to drill these holes and mount that one. And this will end up having to be maybe cut off a little bit more, but we'll just leave it loose on the throttle arm so I can slide it back and forth and we'll adjust it out here on the throttle and cut off what we need to. So let me get these holes drilled and I'll be back in a minute. Hey guys, uh, I've got the three servos all mounted. Um, I have not lock tighted this yet. I will. Let me, let me stick that throttle arm through there. And get it started in the hole. I'm going to have to, uh, well, there it is. Loosen this. And let me put the throttle up to right there. Be easier to get to. through the throttle deal on the I may need to do a little bit of a bend on the front of this so um, a little bit of Z bend up here on the front where it goes to the carburetor let me see if I can do that right here okay got that one I know I'm out of the camera view, but I am, I'm bending over here. Hang on a minute. Okay. Now, get that in there. Come on. I'm trying to get this linkage up front here. Okay, there. I got it in there, and I'll make sure that. I'll pull the throttle all the way down. Cool, got just enough slack on each end. Okay, at this point now, we are gonna take our Loctite and put a little on these. Put a little too much there, but oh well, won't hurt nothing. Now, I gotta get in there with my needle nose and hold on to the quick connect so that I don't twist it and that arm since that down good and tight let's go ahead and do this one while we're in here we can make the final adjustment on the steering on the front one since the cowl is still open ah come on get it straight on my wrench I know you just love looking at the back of my hand right there Okay, let me cinch that down. 
all right all right we got those no, I haven't hooked that one up yet but we've got the throttle and we'll make the final adjustments on the front we got the rudder and steering all in the right direction I did end up going and drilling a hole right through here had to do it very carefully so I didn't hit my switch I ran a zip tie around that tube and then I put more glue there but I want to keep that tube from slipping so seems to be doing pretty good right there not binding or anything so and it won't go that far that's at 100 percent it'll we'll cut it down it'll probably only move about half of that on low rates so anyway all right there's that um i guess let's go ahead and do the throttle while i've got this on and everything and show you how to do that all right um okay let me move my light let me move my camera All right, here's our throttle. Now, I'm hoping you can see down in that throttle barrel. All right, what we want to do is pull our trim on our radio all the way to the bottom. Okay, that's as far back as the servo arm will pull this linkage. Okay, now what we want right there is we want this throttle barrel shut at that point. Let me get some Loctite on here so we can go ahead and set this. Let me get ready. All right, now we're gonna pull that throttle arm back. And I don't know if you can see down in there with the opening, but we're gonna pull that back till it's just, not all the way bottomed out, but just closed. And then I'm gonna get a hold of it with the pliers. And cinch her down good. Okay, the other end's already tight. Now, when I trim this back up, I'm hoping you can see this, there's center. Now it opened that throttle barrel. I don't know if you can see the hole down in there or not, but it opened it just perfect. I actually may have to go back down just a hair for idle. Okay. Now we're binding, so we've got to set the travel adjustment so it doesn't bind. It's not binding backwards, but it is forward. So let me go into my radio. Um, find that. Let's see here. Enter. Uh... Well, can't remember where it's at. Hang on a minute. It's real set. Come on, man. Wing tight. Hmm. Can't remember. That's, that's not it. Timer. Throttle cut, throttle curve, throttle servo set, that's just reverse. All right, let me figure out this radio here and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, we've got it set where it's not binding. And what I had to do, uh, barrel's all the way open at full throttle, and I've got good smooth transaction. This radio doesn't have travel adjust on it, which is kind of strange. That's the only thing I found so far that I don't like. I had to go into throttle curves and I had to set them up uh, and where it's smooth all the way to the top and bottom and I had to pull it down over here next to that line because up in the corner it binds it so you have to set this travel adjustment on your throttle with throttle curves in this radio but once you get used to it it's easy to do uh, I just had to figure it out because I wasn't used to that usually you use travel adjustment so anyway throttles all done now I can pull my trim all the way down that will shut the throttle barrel and it'll kill the engine uh, put it back up to center to start it and then adjust your idle to there up or oh, excuse me up or down whatever you need to do so that should be just about right idle may have to go up a click or two there we go got the throttle all set up uh, now we will I think I might end this section right here so I can get it loaded up and then when we come back we'll make the uh, linkage for the uh, rudder and elevator and we'll hook the steering linkage up and do all that so i think i'll end this for part three and be back uh, soon for part four stay tuned thanks for watching